Okay, so now we're ready to start talking about methods that return values. This is not something we've done yet. And um, I want to do a method that mimics a vending machine. Now, think about the jukebox that we've already looked at and the way a jukebox is different from, from a vending machine. When you interact with a jukebox, you put your money in and a selection for the song, and then you walk away empty-handed. The jukebox does not give you anything back, okay? A vending machine is different, okay? It's like the jukebox in that you insert your money and you insert a selection, but what happens then? The vending machine produces some kind of snack and you are walking away with literally something in your hands, a bag of chips, a candy bar, or something like that. So um, let's uh, reproduce that using a method here. And it just, um, in the past, I said, okay, take it on faith. We're just going to do start with the return type. The return type is void. Not so, not so in this case. This vending machine method is going to return a string, which is going to represent like a bag of pretzels or a bag of Doritos or something like that. So this method returns a string, we would say. The string is going to represent the snack that we want to buy. So we're going to call our method vending machine. And um, we, you know, just like the uh, jukebox, we'll have to give it some money and then also a selection. Okay, and I put some sample selections up here. Um, We'll say A1 is going to be Doritos, they cost $1. A2, Lay's Potato Chips, $1. C3, Strawberry Pop-Tarts, $1.50. Now, um, let's, uh, we're not going to worry about this just yet. Let's write a little bit of code here. Um, I'm going to say, now this method is going to give something back, and I think I'll call that, whatever we give back is going to be a string called Purchase Item. Okay, and I think I will begin with a uh, null string there, okay? And so we'll say something like this, and I have this already typed out. Okay, so if the money is $1, then they either want the Doritos or the potato chips. So if the money is $1, I'm going to assess the selection. If it was A1, they wanted the Doritos, or else it must be the potato chips. So we have a little like nested if else, if inside of an if there. Or else, if they provided $1.50, they must have wanted the Pop-Tarts, so that's what we're going to give back. Okay, or else maybe they didn't provide the correct change at all, and we're going to say, please insert the correct change. So then, very importantly, notice how the compiler is uh, complaining. I said this method is going to return a string, okay? And um, so what we have to do is include a return statement. We are returning the purchase item, whatever we've decided. Okay, that purchase item, we're setting it to whatever they want. We're figuring out what they want. We're sorting it out. Do they want Doritos? Do they want potato chips? Whatever they want, it's going to end up in that purchase item variable. And then when all is said and done, we are returning the purchase item. So this method gives something back. So this line here is like the real life equivalent of that bag of chips falling into the, the bottom of the vending machine where you reach in and get it out of you, you know, actually giving back the thing that you wanted from that, from that machine, in this case, from the method. Okay, so um, let's, let's call the method. Now, very importantly, all right, I have an important point to make. In the past, in all the videos that we've done so far, we would say, hey, you run your code. Okay, so let's say I wanted um, those potato chips, for example, A2, I believe. Okay, um, I'm going to run this program. Okay, and what's going on here? I don't see my potato chips, okay? Here's the thing, this is an important point. When you have a, um, 
a method that returns a value, you're not going to call it like this. This worked in the previous programs, in the previous videos. It's not going to work here. I mean, it, is, it does work. The method does run. I did get those potato chips back, but they didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything with the, with the value that I got back, the potato chips. So they just kind of like slipped into the abyss and I never saw them. The program never sees them. Uh, well, the, the user at least won't see them on the console. So this is not, I'm going to put a comment here. This is, sorry, I'm having typing issues, not how to call a method that returns a value. Don't do that. Okay. What you would do is somehow capture, capture the return value, like in a variable, for example. Let's do this. We're going to say string my lunch equals, and then call the method. Okay. So those potato chips are going to come back, and they're going to go into this variable called my lunch. And from there, I can say console.writeLine my lunch. Okay, let's run it now. We'll see if we see the return value. And there they are. Okay, so the point there is when you have a method that returns a value, you have to call it in a specific way so that that value is somehow captured. In this case, I captured it in a variable. Okay. Um, another way I could have done that, let's say I'm still hungry and I want those Pop-Tarts. Okay. I'm going to say console.writeLine and what is it? I think $1.50 they cost. And then what was the, I don't think the code matters too much, but it's uh, C3 here for the Pop-Tarts. Okay, what's going on here? Cannot convert from decimal to string. Um, decimal money. Oh, I, I, I know. I, I didn't put the actual function call here. Sorry about that. That's the price I pay when I try to wing it. Okay, so um, calling the, uh, the method here. So... Um, passing a dollar fifty and C three. This will be the pop tarts, and I'm going to run that, and you'll see. Now, first, I'm going to get the my lunch, which is, which is the potato chips, and then the pop tarts right after that. But the point is, okay, the point is, look at the way I'm calling this method. I'm do I'm getting something back. I'm getting the pop tarts back, but I'm doing something with them. In this case, I just plop it right into the console dot right line, and boom, the pop tarts go to the screen. Um, but the point is I, I'm doing something with it. It's not like this first call, which was a false start. Remember, this is when I got the potato chips back, but they just slipped into the abyss and I never saw them. So be careful. When you, when you have a method that returns a value, you have to call the method in a way that that value is captured somehow either in a variable or maybe put into the uh, the you know right into the right line so it goes to the console